dumb jokes, you're fucked. You're fucked, mate. Fucked. You're brown bread. You're brown bread. You're brown bread. Anybody that complains that you laugh at your own joke doesn't understand that it just happened. I mean, like, I just came up with it now. I didn't script this stupid. I find it funny, too. What's the problem? Yeah, you're stupid. You don't know jokes. It's weird, eh? People are like, well, you're not supposed to acknowledge your own hilarity. Why the fuck not? I'm fucking hilarious. Why else hilarious. would I do it? <laughs> yeah, right? I'm not funny to impress anybody else. I'm funny for me, bitch. It's not like a fart. Yeah. Do you realize if there's no well, one funny is. around you, someone has to be? Yeah, that person better be you or you're fucked. You're fucked, mate. You're fucked, mate. You're brown bread. Mm. You know what's great? I mean, think about think about Rockstar, right? The guys who made Grand Theft Auto. They're very humble beginning, and their beginning is something of a like uh, a bit of a social commentary, right? Like, and that's why they keep that tradition in the Rockstar thing. Like, they their worlds are always satirical. That's by their nature. That's kind of like their message. We're like Rockstar has a has a has an agenda, buddy. Yeah, Rockstar has an agenda to talk about the shitty world. It really wants to be a kind of gross, grittier, uglier version of humanity, but it's it's never far off from the reality, and that's what's kind of funny about it, right? Yeah. You're like, are they really being unfair, you know, when they portray us as all seemingly self-interested, selfish, greedy, violent? Honestly. Uh, the darkness, honestly. The darkness is coming, Tom, the darkness. Oh, man. The darkness is coming. Find a toilet fast. I, I learned my lesson. My lesson was this, is that it, uh, so long as Jacob ignores his anger, then he, he's basically a fucking pussy. He doesn't want to do anything. You're like the Dexter of comedians. I'm only powered by anger. Like, I'm not powered by a sense of chill. Here we go. I'm not powered by the sense of fucking relaxation. <laughs> nope. Nope. If I'm not <laughs> angry about anything, then that's a bad sign. Like, that means that there will be no content production, everything grinds to a halt. If I'm too laid back, you gotta do something to make me angry, dude. You're gonna have to... What's like, wrong with Jake? He's not pissed at oh, all. Oh, man, he's so, so chill relaxed. right now. Oh. It's not right. <laughs> we gotta get him out of this mood he's in. He's been happy for weeks. <laughs> what does really the world do? It's really bad. Oh, my God. Uh, it's... it's... Subscriptions are down. Things are real good for him, man. <laughs> oh, no. Subscriptions are tanking. <laughs> Things are so good. Oh, so did I tell you that uh, part of the Sketchy News Network, I'm going to be doing a segment on comics? Really? Yeah, with the guy who's uh, helping me show run the comics. And we're, I'm going to be making fun of primarily how Marvel Comics has been tanking because they're, they're really pandering to the lowest, well, the lowest common regressive. That there is. So here's what they decided to do. I'm going to just list you what they did with some of the most famous characters in the last few months. So first, they made Thor a woman. And, and by that, they basically took Thor's hammer away from him, disgraced him, and then just some girl took his identity over. And she was literally fighting villains that were uh, basically kind of uh, set up misogynistic trolls, like just easily taking them down, you know, hmm. like with, with just bad... Bad writing. Like, I can't stress that. There was no subtlety to this. Like, for instance, Marvel created a character called Modak, Modak. which looks exactly like um, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, Modak. And he's all, he says, make America great again and all this other kind of shit in the comic book. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? Okay, I'm not, I, you know I hate Donald Trump, but if they created a supervillain based on Obama, I'd be like, what the fuck, man? Like... Why don't you stay out of politics? This is shit for kids. It's fantasy. Right, right. And if you want to really make a point, like any good story, you're not supposed to hammer anybody on the head with it. You're actually supposed to take a subtle approach. Well, was it the fact they brought in a politician or the fact it just wasn't It was handled writing? clumsily. Like, if right. it would have been funny as well and if it wouldn't have been direct. I think that's the other thing, too, that people really resent. They resent being directly preached to... In con books, and you have to remember right, that right. comic book ownership is not is apolitical. It's it's really across the board that you'll find comic book fans because it's a, it's escapism, mm -hmm. and people like any narrative story will bring in their own meaning, their own you know their own form of narrative through it. Like that's why you'll always have people identify with certain characters because they view themselves in those characters, right? That's that's just how self fucking centered we are. We can only like things that are like us. Congratulations, you man. You just found out something about yourself. But yeah, so 
effectively these stories so so you got female thor and the next thing you got is that they they decided that they were going to make captain america a bad guy and turn him into a hydra agent oh because, come on because they wanted to troll all the racists who had complained about captain america being taken over by falcon who's a black guy so rather than sort of make a subtle point about it they decided to sort of like openly be like hey you're you're just a piece of shit for uh, for disliking the fact that we gave captain america to somebody else Ignoring maybe some of their legitimate criticisms, such as saying, we don't like the fact that all you're doing is putting a new color or a new fucking look on existing characters that we've cared about for something like 20 years. And you can understand that people don't like change, right? Like, it's never gone well. But now, recently, their new thing is that they've decided to make Iron Man a 15-year-old black girl. Hmm... First of all, is she called Iron Man if she's a woman? Like, you realize it says man at the end. Like, I, I don't want to be strict about anything, but if you call yourself Iron Man, you know, it's going to be causing a lot of gender confusion when you're a 15-year-old girl who's calling yourself Iron Man. <laughs> like, there's, there's, yeah, there can be, there's like going to a... be pronoun confusion right there. Be like, uh, sir, are you clearing the path? Hey, I'm a girl. I'm Iron Man. I guess it's breaking all the rules, right? All the gender rules, all the race rules, all the name rules. In a sense, okay, so Why it not? generates, the, the, the good news is that it generates a lot of initial interest in it. So uh, the sale of comic books will, after the first issue, have a slight spike. Right. But on average, these th that will be reduced by 50% by the second issue. And by most other issues, they've almost all been universally canceled. Because the existing fan base has stopped buying comic books. There's a 35% reduction in comic book buying. This at a time where comic book movies could not be bigger. That doesn't seem like it would make sense, right? But it's because of this weird alienation. Like it's almost like they don't, they don't like their own fans anymore, or they figure, oh well, all our fans are these kind of like asshole dudes. Yeah, yeah, a lot of your fans are kind of asshole guys. So what? Like uh, yeah. you hate money? Like here's the <laughs> thing: uh, the people that you were initially making the comic books for don't buy comic books. They don't like. E, they're not interested in it. They're they they're not devoted. And they're not making enough money to to sustain. It. I mean, like you got to make a good living if you're going to actually buy fucking comic books. And if you have a kid or any of those other things, are you going to be spending fifty dollars a week on the new Thor, or on the new Captain America, or on the new uh, uh, Iron Man? I I'm not sure that you will. I and don't so, think so so and and, and yeah, I've read a lot of comments from people online about that shit and and. What they're also very tired of, and this this rhetoric actually mimics a lot of what's happening politically, where people are saying, "I'm sick and tired of being called racist or whatever for not liking something." And I think it's a legitimate complaint because yeah. if 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 you're just throwing that around like it means nothing, then pretty soon it means nothing. And when there's legitimate issues where that's happening, well, now you've lost all fucking moral high ground. Yeah, for sure. Like, and for what? For what? Like, momentary a, spike in like sales. Like, here, here's a good example. Here's the th latest thing that the fucking internet's blowing up about. So, they decided to make Sulu gay in the new movie. And George Takai did not approve. And now the whole internet's like, well, why, George Takai? You should approve. And he was like, why don't you make a fucking interesting character rather than shoehorn someone and make them gay just because the actor who played him was gay? Like, what the fuck are you saying right now? And... Right, and, and to it doesn't just, really make sense. To just show how fucking clueless people are about that. So Simon Pegg, you what know a, him. What a strange homage. You know Simon Pegg yeah, yeah, from, sure. uh, from Shaun of the Dead. He wrote part of the new uh, script for Star Trek. And he's like, with all respect to George, you know, I think it's fine and blah, blah. And I'm like, do you really respect him? Did you fucking listen to what he said? He told you, if you want to honor like my legacy, why don't you create a new interesting character? That is gay. And I'll really get behind that rather than just take this character that I played as straight and be like, he was closeted gay this whole time? Closeted in the future. Like, okay. How does that make sense? <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And every fucking mouth-breathing idiot says, well, it's an alternative timeline. So if they change the part of the future, you're suddenly gay? Like, what the fuck, man? Like, this is why when you pander, everybody who actually has integrity who cares about story, who cares about character, well, now you're just going to fucking be like, oh, it's so unfortunate. Now the internet's turning against Takai, being like, it's so unfortunate that he says that it wasn't, you know, that he didn't approve. 
Well, he doesn't get to have his own fucking opinions now either about the whole thing? So on one hand, you want to honor him. On the other hand, you want, want to, to say completely fuck, fucking ignore him? Fuck his opinion. Yeah. Fuck his reaction. And like, even Takai was like, uh, so, you know, I read your letter where you're like, with all due respect, did you fucking really mean it? Because I don't think you did. It's an easy way for people to say, I respect him as the person. No, if you do, you'd listen to what they have to say and you'd actually address what they have to say as opposed to go to the internet and say, hey, I made a character gay. Give me a fucking award already. Wow, you're so brave. Yeah, kind of cheap cheap out version of... Uh, it's a fucking cop out. It's yeah. just That's what's just so sad. I'm like, listen, if you don't want to create animosity towards you know your own market, create new characters and rely on the strength of your writing to develop them, to, to show that maybe there are stories and narratives that deserve to be told. But that's the only way you're going to prove it is by fucking doing it, by not taking over somebody else's... IP and being like, now you're mine. I mean, it's lazy. I can't even express how lazy that is. I mean, it would be like, listen, I'm, I'm thinking of a new character. I'm going to take uh, Power Man, who's like one of the first black characters, and I'm going to make him be a 13-year-old uh, trans girl. Because why not? Like, right? Power Man. But it, 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 they want to be identified as a she, but still keep the Power Man. Okay, I don't know what to do about that. Okay, huh? what? What? <laughs> Do what you want, I guess. You could just okay. create a new character. That is an option out there, but it's not one that's being uh, exploited. And that's just... That's Cheaply just done. It's sad. And, and you know, Low like effort. I said, 35% reduction in comic sales when it should be booming. Mm-hmm. It, it should be explosive. The lazy fucking, writing. Just lazy. But lazy. you know what? Every fucking... Uh, everyone says the same thing. They're just tired of lazy writing. Lazy, lazy writing. But you keep buying these fucking movie tickets for bad movies. Shame on you. Shame. That's on you. you. That's on you. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you have a moment to speak? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Are you interested in the greater good trademark? Uh, I generally see myself as trying to do good, a good person. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of interested. Well, then you might be the just the kind of person we're looking for at the greater good trademark. Uh, uh, what's that thing you keep saying? Huh? Mm -hmm. At the end there. Oh, when I say the end of the greater good trademark... Trademark? Yeah, the trademark. <laughs> what is that? Well, that's my legal obligation. Why don't you don't worry about it, copyright? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Well, why don't we go into this restaurant and have a, have a nice sit-down and... And talk, uh, talk about this over lunch. Wow, this is a really big contract. I don't know if I want to sign a contract. What exactly do you guys do at the Greater Good? Oh, no, it's not called the Greater Good, sir. It's the Greater Good Trademark. Greater Good Trademark. <laughs> do, I, do I have to I'm say sorry, that? sir. The, uh, the time limit has elapsed on, <laughs> signing, on the signing uh, window for this contract. On your reading window. On you, your reading window. You're now actually obligated to sign the contract. You're now in violation and considered <laughs> hostile. <laughs> your complacency has been considered hostile. <laughs> Your so-called indecision is considered hostile. <laughs> so can I count on you to sign and start working for the Greater Good Trademark? I'll have to think about it, patent pending. <laughs> hey, so what, what products are, are we dealing with here? Well, at the Greater Good Trademark, we sell all kinds of things like pesticides, poison, <laughs> cigarettes, uh, and industrial waste. You sell industrial waste? Well, what I mean by that is we sell space where we actually just throw industrial waste into and just create a dump site, basically. I can't talk about it, trademark. <laughs> Let's just say there are certain things I can't talk about, Pat Betty. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm in violation of my contract for even revealing some of these secrets. Big guy upstairs is going to have my neck, trademark. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I'm going to. He's going to take my second-born child. I think I'm going to. I just need to. Pat Betty. Yeah, we just, we'll find a list of all the different... Uh, Things, designations, trademarks, copyright, patent pending. <laughs> and we'll just work them into every common phrase <laughs> for our life. Maybe the waiter shows up at the end like, uh, can I offer you dessert? Uh, Registered trademark. Registered trademark. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the washrooms? They're downstairs. Trademark, patent pending. <laughs> uh, what the know. fuck is this place? <laughs> you know what reminds me of it a little? Remember that story I was telling you? Who will defend the no-name brands? It's like this guy. It's like in the future where you're basically getting welfare from companies just to talk about their products right, all the time. Right, right. But if you slip uh -huh. up, you basically get fired and you have to find another shittier name oh, brand no. to work for. 
<laughs> and and it gets successively worse, right? Because they're so sketchy that you can barely contain yourself. Right. And then basically you're stuck with the no-name brands at the end. It's you know? like the Golden Palace future, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoop. Tattoo on the forehead mm -hmm. of like a tampon company or something. Oh, no. Well, what about Olympic athletes? I mean, I read somewhere that some of them are getting about a few pennies an hour. Uh, That's amazing. Equivalent. A few pennies. A few pennies. I mean, you would pay a, a migrant worker more than you pay an Olympic athlete. Yeah. What country are we talking about here? <laughs> America. America? What? The United States of America. Mm -hmm. You go, girl. You go, girl. You go, girl. <laughs> you, you support them athletes. Well, you know what their solution is? Is like, Well, they're like, eventually they'll have sponsors. Oh, you mean eventually they'll have to fucking shill themselves. Is that what you mean? Eventually they'll pull themselves up by their bootstraps. And if they don't win gold... They fucked up. That's on them. They're they're slime. I'm like, what if your sponsor's McDonald's? Okay? You gotta run around and be like, I'm gonna hold this Big Mac, which has nothing to do with my With a healthy right lifestyle. <laughs> and anything that I really support as an athlete. Right. Yeah. <laughs> McDonald's, a major sponsor of the Olympic ha Games? Have a McDonald's hamburger. Okay, I wanna wash my hands I'm now. so sick. <laughs> I'm feeling tired. <laughs> So what is a what is a, uh, a the average McDonald's meal consist of? Okay, let's let's examine it. Some kind of well, whatever you call a burger, although they call it a sandwich because I think Protein legally, slime. I think legally you can't call it a burger in America with what they put in uh, it. So like probably three cups of sugar. In my a, my guess in though is that they call it a sandwich so that it doesn't feel like it's that fatty piece of shit you're eating with like you know two pieces of grade D beef. I'll, I'll just have the sandwich, please. <laughs> Followed with Could I fried, have a knife and fork? fried potato and a massive amount of salt. Like triple fried potato and mm -hmm. yeah, infused with extra grease. And now, basically, to finish up this healthy little snack, why don't you wash it down with, or with 16 ounces of fucking sugar water. Carbonated sugar water. Are you for real? This is the drink of the Olympics? I mean, this is the kind of drink that you're going to have... It, when you're in, in Antarctica and you're trying to consume about 7,000 calories just to stay alive. Like, that's, that's, that's basically what that meal is for, okay? Like, that is... And, and plus, I can't even imagine what other ingredients they never mentioned that's just going to make it into your, into your body. Did, did I ever tell you that during the Vietnam War, they found soldiers with bodies riddled with bullets? And at first, they didn't really understand why are the Vietnamese constantly shooting dead bodies and then they realized what was happening is that soldiers in vietnam were not decomposing right away like their vietnamese counterparts would and so mm. they thought they would wake up as zombies and so they fucking double tap them triple tap them quadruple tap them to make sure that they wouldn't rise from the dead so gotta say something about your diet yo america the un the un you're never gonna decompose you're like you're that weird Big Mac in that documentary. Basically, when 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 global civilization collapses and like all the, our entire species disappears, the only thing that will remain as pristine as it, it ever was was America, because it will be coated in the same shit that they put on the Big Mac, and you'll never age. You know, you will stay pristine, dead, but still fucking pristine. They'll walk down and be like, wow. I mean, you don't think that a future alien civilization will come down in ten thousand years? To, to Florida and to Disney World and see a giant statue of Mickey Mouse and be like, this was their god. Mm -hmm. This was their god. <laughs> they prayed to a giant mouse. <laughs> they prayed to a giant rodent. Why are the aliens rednecks? Well, you know, just because they're aliens doesn't mean that they're, uh, you know, not rednecks. <laughs> you think the universe doesn't have a couple of fucking rednecky like little planets and hick planets and shit? We might be the hit planet that the rest of the planets are avoiding. Oh, I'm sorry, Your Highness. I don't talk like they do on Alpha Centauri. Yeah. So let's examine. Let's let's pretend for a moment. Like you, you've watched Star Trek: The Next Generation before, right? Yeah, you've seen that show. Yeah. So one of the things that they used to have is if you wanted to make contact with alien races, you had to reach a certain technological milestone. Of course. Okay. So one, do you think that we're even close to that? that where any alien species should even say hello. First of all, we, we, we have people living in the Stone Age right now, on Earth. This yeah, we, is, th there's 30,000 years they haven't changed the way they live. We really have nothing to offer. And if we did, we wouldn't want to give it away. 
Well, no, we already did. It's it's in our fucking light, light waves that we send out when we're broadcasting on TV. They already see everything they need to see, okay? They can see the worst of us. Yeah, exactly. So, you know what? If there is alien life out there and they're smarter than us, they haven't reached out and smart on them, you know? Good call. You think we're fucking ready for you? I mean, for God's sakes, in Kentucky this week, you know what opened? You probably don't know this. The Ark oh, Encounter. Arc. The super big Ark. The giant $71 million debacle. And isn't it illegal for uh, elementary, publicly funded schools to take their kids on a class trip there? Oh, well, now you're asking in the state of Kentucky. Kentucky. If it's illegal? I think it might be illegal. Okay. They're going to try it. but uh, it, Is it a... Is there a proper separation of church and state in Kentucky? Kentucky. Well, let me tell you something. When you give millions of dollars worth of subsidies to build a temple to ignorance, I mean, Answers in Genesis is so confused, they put dinosaurs in the ark. <laughs> they put fucking dinosaurs in the ark. So they believe in dinosaurs for sure, but they're like... Oh, is this Ken Ham's yeah. production? Wow. So, I mean, like, okay, I could see them doing an arc where they have the standard animals, but they also included dinosaurs. I mean, you've got to believe that there's a bunch of fucking other religious fundamentalists who will refuse to go because there are dinosaurs on the ark, and they're like, wait a minute, there were no dinosaurs on the ark, you stupid idiot. God, get your story straight, all right? Jeez. So, um, yeah, there's probably going to be a weird snobbery. I mean, it, it opened to 4,000 people. The parking lots were empty, dog. Dog? Opening day. The only people who went were a bunch of atheists to sort of like make fun of them. And I'm like, you guys are just giving them advertising. Just don't show up, dummies. Like, you're making, you're doing the work for them. You big dumb dumb? Just, just, just sit back and watch them fail. Like, you don't need to wait that long, okay? <laughs> do you know, do you know how much visitors they need to repay 71 million dollars that's a lot that's a lot that's a lot and that's just the construction costs by the time they have to repay which could be fucking decades they would have to have a steady stream of visitors which is just not gonna happen <sighs> like they think they literally think that people are gonna come from all over the place to see this but what they don't realize is they actually have two competing arts there's a what? guy in i, I want to say norway who <laughs> built one that actually floats and he's taking it all over the place, first to Brazil, you know, yeah. home of the Zika virus, uh, to showcase and his... And religion. To Relig showcase his art, religious. but I have... I, I give it a 50-50 chance that it will sink in the middle of the ocean or get cracked Are in they half traveling by, uh, with animals or just like... No, no, no. no he's just, he, he just built a giant ark. But what people don't realize is that the largest boat that was ever constructed... Uh, sank when it broke in half. That's mm -hmm. why they stopped building large wooden boats. Huge ass wooden boats. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. when you build a really big wooden boat out in the ocean, you can run into some problems, which is why we don't use wood no more. Okay. Mm -hmm. We use steel, hard steel. So there's that one. And then somebody else is building another attraction. I forget what it is. So there's actually competing arcs. But if they should have an arc race. Yeah. You know, like, who's the best? Who's got the most historically accurate art? <laughs> Uh, everybody and nobody uh, <laughs> you're all winners i guess am i right this sentence is false like <laughs> who cares <laughs> wait i don't understand that sentence uh error <laughs> logic errors <laughs> yeah apparently that's the way to defeat ai by the way eh? that's her that's her little back pocket logic error this, yeah th this statement is false a erroneous <laughs> loop <laughs> <laughs> then run repeat oh we got this we got this these, nice. these fucking robots is dead. He did. They did. So yeah, that's that's basically um, your kind of week full of, uh, of of stupid. You they open a giant museum, a seven floor monstrosity with like hundreds of cages, and they were, they even had these elaborate like this is how the poop is gathered, and you're just like, dude, that's man. disgusting. You have too much poop on your hands. I'm like I. I understand that you think that this story is real, but yeah, I mean, you have like 10,000 cages. How many fucking animal species do you think there is, you dipshit? I mean, there's 80,000 species of beetles 80, that we know of. 80,000. 80,000. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Megalon. Come on, Megalon. But, uh, you know, if there's any way to look at it in a positive light, why would there be three arcs coming out at the same time? It's the dying ambers, man. 
Of course they need to reinforce their faith. Do you think that anyone... Do you need to be constantly reinforced in your beliefs, Tom? No. No. You do not. No. You're fine. You don't need to build monuments to your fucking beliefs just so you can rest assured that everybody else believes the same thing you do. It's a little thing called confidence. If you actually have something more than one book... I mean, literally one book, these people. That's their answer. One. One book. I mean, how many books do you think have been written in the history of mankind? Count scrolls in that shit or whatever. More than one. Probably more than one. Yeah. <laughs> I hear it's more than one. <laughs> I hear it's that little, you know, sign that looks like Pac-Man, except for without that little circle. Yeah. It's a little, it's more than one. More than one. So check out more than one book, everybody. <laughs> read more than one book in a lifetime. Is there, how about that? Do I have a piece of advice? Just read more than one book. More than one book. If you say that you believe everything that one book says... You should try the other one. Yeah, you should try a couple more books. The other book's pretty good, too. And what, what would happen if you read a bunch of books and they disagree with that one book that you thought had all the answers? What should you do about oh, that? Oh, crap. Don't panic. Just realize that there's a lot more books out there. Grow a brain. You'll probably find an even better book. <laughs> hey, if you love that one book, don't you think there might be an even better one out there? That's just religious malarkey. Did you right think there. you found the best book that was ever written? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe I should stop one while I'm ahead. But that? I'll tell you what: if you did find the best book that ever was ever written, well, then if you read a whole bunch of other books, won't it just kind of show you how good that book was? Sometimes you just need something to kind of like measure it against, right? Just to just to see if it's any good, right? You know, right. not, not a little curious about that. Go out there and read a fucking book. <laughs> you should try the other one. It's pretty good. You should, just any other one. At, at first, you know, I don't. if you read ten books, at least make sure that it's not the other books that say, hey, by the way, that one book you're reading, that's a great book. And if you read any book next, try that one. <laughs> on. You should probably avoid reading those types of books as your next book. Come you know? on. That's not a great book. You know? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not fantastic. But, uh, I would guess that there's there's probably ten or more books out there in the world. You know, you should check out. At least 10. Some theorize that there could even be over 100. Maybe 100 books? Yeah, and if you go to all the distant galaxies, you might find more than 100 books. <laughs> and you know what? 100 books will keep you plenty busy. And all the books that could ever have been written or will be written? Possibly over 150. <laughs> <laughs> it could go as high as 200, but I don't want, really want to push that limit. Yeah, I don't think we, I don't think we need to live in a fairy tale right now. I don't think we, li we need to live in a 200-book universe. I mean, that's a little much. <laughs> Who has the time? <laughs> Who has the time and space, right? <laughs> For 200 books. Yeah, like I'm going to devote a whole fucking shelf to these things. <laughs> what am I, a king? I mean, I, I don't even know what to call it. A shelf book? I mean, it's ridiculous. Nobody has these things. A booked shelf? I don't think so. Ridiculous. A scroll shelf? <laughs> what a waste of time. I, don't, I bet it doesn't even look good. You know, it probably looks awkward in your house. Could you imagine a shelf of those dusty tomes hanging around? Man, I bet you that looks like you're just... You walk in there with a place that's full of these tomes, you probably think, what a mess. What a, what a lazy... <laughs> Way to live. Did you just stack them next to each other? What a mess. <laughs> Hoarder alert. <laughs> Listen, I keep it simple. One book. <laughs> one book to rule them all. I mean, I heard there's a few hundred, but I just kept one. Yeah. You know, it's neat. I don't have to do a lot of I don't of need thinking. any false idols in my life, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. All right, that's good. That's a wrap. Mm -hmm.